Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, featuring in this video, we are going to take a look at some of the hottest, most unbelievable, this is what we all search for, varieties, and not just any varieties, these are all Lincoln pennies, probably one of the most widely searched coins as far as denomination, as far as country is concerned. Lincoln Pennies is the number one, number one most widely collected series from top to bottom in numismatics, bar none. And today we're going to take a look at some of the finest available offerings coming up on Legend Auctions Regency 34 sale, okay, which will occur September 26th. We're going to go ahead and view every single one. From 1935 all the way up. Now, there are a few earlier examples, but in the grand kind of like this whole encompassing umbrella of various varieties, some of the most more identifiable, some of the most more widely cherry-picked varieties occur from the mid-30s all the way up to the present day. And we're going to take a look at some of probably some of the finest examples that you're ever going to see of each one of these storied varieties okay coins traditionally that would show up in the red book sometimes they'll even pop up let's see what do i have here cherry picker's guide you guys are familiar with this which by the way it's sold out on amazon so i can't sell anymore for now i've been trying to uh trying to get um an affiliate link uh, to sell those and uh, I'm still waiting <laughs> the process takes a little while so that way we could uh, we could offer them directly from Whitman's website legend auctions dot com is where you're gonna go okay so they have the entire list of coins that are gonna be offered on the Regency 34 sale okay that's important um, this follows hot on the heels of the Long Beach sale coming up here on heritage auctions this later this week and into next week yes it's nearly fall time and these generally these two sales the long beach and then whatever else follows behind it usually it's either a legend auctions regency sale or a stacks bauer sale okay they follow like concurrently back to back in which it features some of the more premier examples because people are ready to spend money all right, this will give you an idea of what's out there, what the estimated values are of these coins. But anyways, we are here, legendauctions.com. Regency 34, this, I am so hyped for this because generally you don't see quite this level of varieties on here. Uh, usually you see a lot of high-end material, a lot of classical kind of like later 1700s, colonials, into the 1800s so i i was pumped when i went through the sales items and i found a few coins that personally i'm gonna throw a little bit in because i've always wanted them but we have large cents um nothing earlier than the 1855 that you see there on screen but that's a half cent by the way um yeah there's a couple large cents a couple half cents it looks like one half cent and then this 1833 is the earliest one cent coin on the list. Then you have a myriad of exquisite Indian head cents that'll just make you drool all over your screen. And I apologize in advance. You're going to be using a lot of tissues and a lot of paper towels as we're going through these coins. And I will say this Legend Auctions images some of the best looking coins okay not only that but their photography group whoever images these does a phenomenal job at just displaying the overall just kind of like quality the surface the luster just a general eye appeal of these coins so we have a few really marquee coins here we have a double die obverse 1909 vdb uh i would venture to guess that this is probably a 102 which is the more rare double die out of the couple that's available for that date and then you have a couple 1909 s over s you have a regular s over s rpm fs 1501 
and a 1909s horizontal over horizontal s man what what an incredible coin if you've never seen an s over horizontal s it's it's really cool I, i've cherry picked a few of them in my lifetime although they're not mint state 66 pluses okay and what's even more convenient, if you look underneath the pictures, it gives you the estimate of how much these will sell for. And then toward the bottom of each individualized square, you're going to see the starting bid. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Take, for example, this 1909 VDB double die obverse. The starting bid is $8,250, which gives you kind of a general idea of the value of some of these varieties in its highest mint state grades. Simply, simply ravishing. 1910 S over SRPM, another fantastic perennial favorite. Probably one of the more affordable coins on the list. Uh, not unfortunately, but you know, if you have deep pockets, you might want to consider a few of these. Uh, of course, 1927D over D, a 28S, large S. I've found a number of those, but I've never found one as a mid-state 65 red. Crazy. Naive, they even have a 1929S over S RPM FS501. So here's where I wanted to kind of start out the video. The 1935 Double to Die Obverse FS101 is a coin that generally is overlooked um, especially in lower grades, the doubling is subtle enough that it's hard to look at in coins graded anything lower than XF. A lot of your diagnostics is going to be on the date. Of course, the 5 shows the more craziest doubling. In addition, you're also going to see a little bit of doubling on In God We Trust on this one. This one has always been my Achilles heel. I found maybe two or three of them. Um, ironically, both examples were clean, but they were kind of a nicer grade, like an XF or an AU. But I have had issues finding one in high enough grade to be worth anything in my collection. This is a coin that is certainly missing in a nicer grade. Although this one is probably a little bit too rich for my blood given the fact that it has a conservative range estimate of $2,500 to three grand. Oh, man. What a beautiful coin. So the next one we have here is a 1936 double die obverse. As you guys know, there are three distinct double dies for the 1936 date. Relatively common, but to find them in... Mid state 66, like the few examples that you see here, we have a type 1 and a type 2. Two different double dies. We even have a type 3. Simply, simply hard to find. A lot of your doubling, of course, is going to be on the date. Liberty. Those are the two big areas on this coin. And of course, in God We Trust, is going to exhibit some of your strongest doubling on this particular coin now this is a coin that i have found in frequency uh, just by going through bags of wheat scents uh typically these bag of wheat scents have come from my local coin shop and uh, i've had pretty good success my success rate is that i'm i'm usually able to find about one per five thousand count bag now depending on condition of course will play a huge factor in the overall value of those type of coins. But you could get a reasonably graded VF condition, double die obverse, either type 1 or type 2, for around $40. They're very affordable. You can even buy them raw, you know, and then fill that slot in your variety collection. But this is a coin right here, ladies and gentlemen, in this condition. is prohibitively rare. And is so incredibly ridiculously expensive. We're talking an estimate of $8,500 to $9,500. Um, some of you will ask me, where exactly do you find coins like this? Well, there's a few options. And a few options in which it's going to take a lot of hard work. Okay, you can cherry pick off eBay. If the images are good enough and they're sufficient, you can cherry pick 
high-grade examples into the mint states of any of these varieties. <clears throat> eBay has always been this kind of like worldwide, you know, kind of like easiest access marketplace to find stuff like this. You know, you have your 1936 double die obverse type 2. The doubling is similar to the type 1. Um, the actual doubling on the date is a lot stronger, not so much on the Liberty and then on In God We Trust to a lesser degree than the Type 1. All right. Uh, this one is a Mint State 66 Red. Uh, this is actually a lesser expensive coin with an estimate of $2,800 to $3,200. It looks like someone threw in a bid already for crying out loud. That one's going to be a beauty. Uh, and of course, we have the 1936 Double Die Obverse Type 3, in which this particular example has its most strongest doubling on In God We Trust. And then virtually no doubling on the date. All right, this is one right here that most people overlook in lieu of the Type 1 and Type 2. Uh, I found probably two or three of these in my lifetime. The, the Type 3 double die obverse is far by far and away a more difficult variety to find out of the three combined um but the prices certainly don't reflect it this example right here by the way is a mint state 66 plus red type 3 with an estimate of 1500 to 1800 dollars talk about a bargain if you have this kind of money this is a sleeper coin, and it's always been a sleeper coin for the longest time. Uh, but this is a coin right here, guys, that has a lot of potential in the future. So we have a 1939 Double Die Offers. Again, these are all Cherry Pickers Guide varieties. These are all well known throughout the coin collecting community. And this one is one of my favorites. This one has an extra tail on the first nine which is right here. You can see they're just a subtle little tail, and then you have some pretty good doubling in RTY of Liberty. I have found a few brilliant uncirculated specimens of this particular coin um, in the past and have sold it for a great chunk of money uh, raw. Uh, one example I sold for $600 back in 2010. Wow, this, this is a beautiful coin. I mean, you cannot bulk at this numerical grade, Mint State 67 plus red, double die obverse FS 101. You certainly cannot overlook a coin of this type. If you guys haven't picked one up, get a copy of the Cherry Pickers Guide book. Um, again, I wish I had some in Amazon store. They're all sold out currently, but you could go ahead and always check out like Barnes and Noble. Uh, you can even go onto Whitman's website all on its own to find this absolutely indispensable book. So up we up here next, we have a 1941 Double to Die Obverse. This one, of course, is unmistakably a very strong Double to Die. You have it very doubled on the date, on Liberty, and then on Trust. On In God We Trust, you have some thickening of the letters and then to a lesser degree with the other day, uh, letters in In God We Trust, but it's strongest on the word trust. Incredible coin. And this one right here has an estimate of $3,000 to 3500 It's a Mint State 66 red. All right, and this is the FS102. Um, I wish I had the money. <laughs> Show me the money. Um, yeah, here's here's another example. Uh, this is of the 102, I believe, as well. Or maybe this is the... Let's see here. Uh, it doesn't say. There's a 101 and 102. Uh, but this one right here, you have doubling on the date. Liberty is pretty strong. Check out the B and the E on there. Breaking and entering. And then you have a lot of doubling in, in God We Trust. This is one of my favorites. I found a few of these, but not to this particular level. Uh, we have an estimate of $4,200 to $4,600. Amazing. 1943, Steel Scent Double Die Obverse. Okay, you have this very wicked thick 9 in the date. 
all right, and along with the four and three, and then a little bit on the one. You kind of see it smeared off to the right at the bottom of the numeral. Uh, but this is another favorite amongst the community. This one is graded as a 67, and it's got a conservative estimate of $1,500 to $1,800 with two bids already. So this one, um, this one is well on its way. We also have a 1943 D over D. Of course, this is in the red book. Um, as you can see, the secondary D is to the southwest of the primary D on this one. I was this close to cherry picking a brilliant uncirculated copy of this coin for about $45 and someone beat me to it. It was at a local coin shop in the Bay Area and uh, it, this would have been a mid-state 66 or 67 caliber coin. Um, it is a steel sense don't show a lot of circulation wear until they begin to oxidize. But this one, ladies and gentlemen, has a conservative estimate of $2,800 to $3,200 with two bids in the pot already. That's a lot number 50. So let's go ahead and check out the next set of coins here. Uh, the 1943S double die offers. This one, again, is uh, not one that people generally pay attention to you have quite a bit of strong doubling on the one nine in the date and in the four and then to a lesser degree in the numeral three not so much anything in in god we trust but this one right here in the highest of grades people tend to ignore okay it's not the the most expensive the most glamorous double die but it is one that is a cherry picker's guide and very very sought after with an estimate of $1,500 to $1,800, this one is, ladies and gentlemen, a Mint State 67 plus. Simply ravishing. All right, so this is a coin right here that I am going to keep my eye out on. It's a 1944 D over S. Okay, this is an over mint mark. This one has a estimate of $35,000 to $40,000. This is one of the marquee varieties in Lincoln Scent Collecting today. Check out the S that's underneath the D, okay? Kind of a mistake. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's okay. It's a mistake that I love seeing, okay? You know, even, even as a Mint employee, we all make mistakes, right? Especially back during World War times. Wow. This is a beauty of a coin. This is like the top model in the group. A Mint State 67 red. Mm. Does anyone have $35,000 they want to lend me? <laughs> I'm not joking either. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 1946S over D is the other quintessential over mint mark variety in the group right here. It's subtle. There is a D underneath that S mint mark. I've had, I've always had an issue trying to find this coin in any grade. I have been unsuccessful. But this particular example is a PCGS Mint State 66 Red FS 511, and this one has a estimate of twenty five hundred dollars to two thousand eight hundred clams. Oh my God, we are in seventh heaven. Of course, we have a. Requisite 1955 double die obverse. Of course, you cannot have an auction without one of those. That one is a coin that will speak for itself by the time auction bidding is all done. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. So we have a pair of 1970S large date doubled die obverses. Okay, the first example is a Mint State 63. The second example is a 65. If it wasn't for the 1969S double die, this one most certainly would be the doubled die of the modern generation of Lincoln cents. So you have a little bit of doubling in the date, especially on the one and nine, but to a bigger degree on Liberty and on, in God, we trust you could see just this massive splitting on this coin. Just a spread of the doubling is simply just amazing. Again, if it wasn't for the 69S, they would, this would be V1 in the group. 
So it's an FS101 Cherry Picker's Guide variety. Um, and this one has an estimate of ten to twelve thousand dollars. This is more rare than the 69S, yet there are two of them available on this Regency 34 auction site. Alright, 1971 Double Die Auvers. This one I have found a multitude of. Um, quite Not quite this nice. I've pulled a few of them out of BU rolls, and this particular example has strong doubling in not only the date, liberty, but also in In God We Trust. Again, you could reference all of these coins on Copper Coins' website, Chuck Daughtry's site. He has a lot of simply fabulous close-up reference photos for you guys to take a look at. And again, if you haven't bookmarked his site, please do so. As you go through your coin rolls, especially these more modern dated coins beyond the wheat sent backs. This is a beautiful coin with an estimate of three to $3,500, and it is a 66 plus. All right, so incredibly enough, we have a couple double die of 1972, but these aren't just any double die off verses. These are the extremely rare FS-104s. Okay, this is the type four double die. This is die pairing number four out of the group. This is a coin that sells for many thousands of dollars, and... What you're going to want to look at on here, you're going to have doubling in Liberty. And in most cases, you're going to have a rim cut. Okay, that's right here next to Liberty. Okay, that's like one of the diagnostics. Although this particular example isn't showing much of a rim cut at all. But most examples do exhibit that rim cut. And then you have some doubling in In God We Trust. Now, this is a coin right here that has an estimate of $4,000 to $4,500, and this one is a Mint State 66. One of the finest, actually it says tied for the finest. There are a few other examples that have graded at this level. Simply beautiful coin. All right, so we have another 72 double to die, and what is this one? This might be number one. Let's go ahead and confirm, and it is. This has as strong a doubling as a 69S. In, in my estimation, just the overall spread of all the numbers and the letters in, in all of the intricate devices uh, that are pertinent to this double die is all, all strong. Now, this example right here is a Mint State 67 Red. It's one of the finest. Um, this one has an estimate of $2,500 to $3,000. Okay, I believe there was a 68 that exists in this coin, which doesn't quite make it fine -ist, uh, but it is among some of the finest that you could possibly own in your collection. So we are going to uh, take a look at a few more. Uh, this 1983 Double Die Reverse, this is a coin that we all opt to look for. This is an absolute stunning, beautiful coin. Of course, your strongest doubling is going to be on one cent and all of the other devices. United States of America, E Pluribus Unum, you name it. This is a coin that's been on my hit list for a while. This one is a Mint State 67. The slab looks a little scuffy. Double die reverse, baby. Woo! I want it. It's got an estimate of 1000 to $1,200 with no bids. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? I'm going to put a bid in that one today at the 550 level. I've always wanted that coin, and I think this is an example and a grade that is deserved of my collection. I've, I, I've always thought about owning one at a high grade. It's not the highest grade. I believe there's a 68 that exists or a 67 plus that sells for six, seven, eight thousand $8,000. We're going to skip over the proof. We all know about the 1990 No S Proof Lincoln Penny. How about the 1994 Double to Die Reverse? Okay, you're going to find the doubling in the bays of this coin. And let's see if I can get in close. Right here, you can see that one extra line. That's a doubling of one of these columns that's in between columns, uh, what is that, 10, 11? I think, no, 11, 12. And then you have another one right here. 
Although on this particular image, it doesn't show up as strong, but this one right here is a Mint State 67 red with a estimate of $2,200 to $2,600, okay? And a lot of these coins, by the way, in case you're wondering why they're all popping up in one just massive cluster, is they are all part of the Hanover Collection. That's the provenance for this one. All right, we all know the 1999 wide AM reversed Lincoln cent that we all try and look for. Okay, these are valued around $100 raw and in circulated condition. But you have a considerable gap between the A&M. This one is a high-grade example at a 67 red. And this one has an estimate of $1,000 to $1,200. That's a beauty. You don't see them at this grade level. That often. Well, I think that's it. Um, for this one here, uh, what looks to be, from that point forward, all we have are the regular dated Lincoln sets with no varieties, although there is an S over at horizontal S. But the big highlight is the handover collection of Lincoln scent varieties. Up and down, I'm going to throw in a bid to this 1983 double die reverse. Let's see what happens. <coughs> I have a dollar amount I have in mind that I'm willing to go up to on that one. Uh, but that would be a nice coin to own ahead of the holiday season. Um, yeah, a lot of stunners. If you guys have time, check out Legend Auctions. Dot com. This is the Region C34 auction, um, and, and again, as always, uh, they do these every so often. Uh, I think every, what, three months or every quarter, they do a Region C auction. This one, of course, takes place at the Bellagio in Vegas. And if you guys are in town, uh, you can elect to go to the Da Vinci Room, number two, at the Bellagio, to take a look at the coins in person. Before you place a bid. So if you got any of you guys that are looking to buy a high profile piece, they will be available. Now you're going to have to call Legend to set up an appointment to take a look at the coins of choice. But generally, these folks have done an upstanding job taking quality, just absolutely amazing photography on all these coins. But these... Keep in mind, these coins right here, at one point or another, have been cherry-picked, okay? And these still exist out there for the taking. You just got to know where to look for. eBay, coin shows, you would be surprised how many coin dealers don't care about these varieties. Personal collections that someone's trying to s sell, all right? The big idea is, are you going to have... A huge amount of success cherry picking these, say, you know, off of like Facebook, where everybody knows that these varieties exist, or perhaps uh, a local coin shop where, you know, let's just assume that it is a foregone conclusion that a lot of these dealers actually search through their inventory for coins like this. There's a bunch of different ways that you could go about it, all right? And uh, I've had a huge amount of success cherry picking a lot of these varieties i would say i've owned about 95 percent of the coins on this list for regency 34 so i want to thank you guys for joining hope you guys enjoyed this kind of montage beautiful simply amazing crop of lincoln scent varieties my apologize for the radio announcer voice i'm feeling very excited about what is to come here at the end of september so you guys check it out. Make sure, make sure that you pay attention to some of these coins as you're going through your rolls, your pocket change. They have a tremendous amount of value, especially this time of year. People are paying up for high quality coins during the busy season, which generally starts sometime in the middle of September. All right. So lots of fun. Enjoy the hunt, guys. It was a pleasure talking this morning. Sorry to keep the video so long. You guys can check out this site for yourself. Check out all the other coins. There is a huge group 
of other coins that are simply amazing. That, that's kind of my phrase <laughs> this morning. Simply amazing, because it is. Um, one of my favorite auction groups to follow. You guys take care. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy your Tuesday, and welcome back to the busy month of coin collecting. You guys take care.